Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you guys logging in on Lincoln Logs TV. Today we're gonna to do a little how to repair a textured ceiling. All right, we've got a spot from around an old skylight that leaked a while ago that we repaired. Now it's time to go back on that particular leak area, repair that. It's not really bad, there's some discoloration, a little bit of a crack seam. Uh, really, <clears throat> I think it leaked for, a, you know, once or twice a long time ago, it never leaked again. And this past, uh, this past fall, it leaked again on the client, on the homeowner. And we ended up coming in and fixing the skylight and now we always want to wait a couple months to make sure the leak is not active anymore and then we come in and fix that ceiling so that's what we're going to get in today very simple project for anybody to do it takes a little bit of patience minimal tools actually minimal expertise you just have to take your time and just kind of follow the instructions so we're going to do that little uh, step by step repair here and i'll get you guys going on that so let's get inside and see what the damage looks like so the skylight's up there. So it leaked below it. It's pretty obvious it was the skylight. All right, that's been fixed. But you can see there's some discoloration in this area. We'll get up close to it. My fingers are probably gonna blur it out. But there's some cracking and peeling along that. See how it kind of scratches away and kind of tumbles away? There's a drywall, a tape joint right along, going straight up that wall. Be a little area. It's gonna be about 18 inches, maybe 24 inches wide, so I can get my full mud blade in there and get a nice big smooth transition across. So when I put that mud on there, I have the ability to make sure I can get it nice and smoothed out and get a nice texture on there. So you can see there's a little bit of will need to be painted from end to end and all the way up to the peak. This whole thing would need to be painted, but we're not gonna cover that with this film. We're just gonna uh, get this thing repaired. So let's get set up and get going with this thing. Real simple tools. This is a razor knife, it's just got a little blade in it. It's real simple. Um, that one's a little bit beat up, but um, real sharp razor in it. You're gonna need that. You're gonna need a 12 inch or 14 inch or 16 inch mud pan. This is for mixing and distributing your drywall mud. You're gonna need a set. You're gonna need several sizes of these. We, uh, it's a graduated um, series of these. This is a six. Eight. There's a. That's a ten, and there's a. This is actually a fourteen, I believe. Um, uh, blade kit, and, and we'll apply different coats of mud to the area in in wider sets. It helps taper it down. We're gonna need some mesh. Um, so the area we're repairing, you saw, has that broken seam. That's that's from drywall mesh. That's paper tape on that ceiling. Now we like the mesh stuff. It's got. You can see it's kind of like a fishnet type stuff. It's also got a little bit of adhesive on the back, so it'll stick really, really well um, to that drywall. <clears throat> Sanding sponges. Um, I like sponges that gave a little bit of give. You can see I've uh, put a few miles on these bad boys here, but really they're great for just multi-purpose use around the house. We use them for drywall, use them for some woodworking stuff. Um, really, they're great, and they're really not hard to find. Um, tw uh, drywall mud. So this is the bag stuff. You'll see it in five-gallon buckets or four-and-a-half-gallon buckets in wet. That stuff's good, but we like this stuff because you can see 20-minute set time. So that we call this 20-minute mud. They make a five-minute mud, a 45-minute mud, a 90-minute mud. All of them will get the job done. I like this stuff. It doesn't crack. It doesn't shrink. And it's super hard when it uh, when it dries. So I, I really like this for any kind of repair work or any kind of stuff we are on a timeline with. Um, really, it's it really is good stuff, and it's just a, a gypsum product, just like any other drywall mud. Um, I don't like the premix unless I'm doing a whole house and we're doing a, a you know a really longer process. And a, simply a drop cloth. This is just a rolled up drop cloth. I mean, you can see it's got a little bit of nasty mold on it. We put some miles on our drop cloths around here. A couple of things I don't have laid out here that I'm going to end up using in there um, are one is a ladder. Um, I'm going to need a ladder. This is about seven and a half feet, eight feet off the ground. It's not super crazy tall. It's not, you know, not a big vestibule. It's 30 feet high and I need to set up scaffolding or anything crazy like that. But um, I, I do need to get up on my little ladder, my little four foot extension ladder. You can use a five gallon bucket for stuff like this. Just make sure you're being careful. If all the safety instructions printed on any ladder that they make, the other thing we'll need is we'll need a vacuum. The first step first couple steps of this are not messy it's a little bit of drip maybe a little bit of water from the spray but it doesn't get really dusty until we get into the until we sand between coats of drywall mud and then when we apply our texture that gets a little bit dusty after uh, up to that point so um, we keep a vacuum we try to cover everything up in these uh, houses we're working on um, and make sure it's safe so we're not messing with anybody's electronic equipment or fancy furniture or anything like that we try to move that stuff out of the way so um yeah so let's jump in there let's get a look and see what's going on and uh get step one going all right, so here's my affected area right here that we showed earlier. I'm gonna just take my small scraper, my small blade, I'm gonna scrape off, just get the loose stuff off. See what I'm dealing with here? Looks like there's two coats of texture on here from a, a previous repair. Probably the whole ceiling was redone at some point. Um, so I wanna get the loose stuff off. Just get down to where the crumbling stuff, get my corner in there. 
you can see there's tape there on the bottom. <clears throat> so there's a tape joint here where when you do these, a lot of times the affected area is bigger than it looks. Don't be afraid of that, it's not a big deal. But we wanna get down to old wallboard. That's the original wallboard set up there. <clears throat> we wanna get down into that so we know where the joint is and we can get that thing floated out properly after we get it all stripped off. It's gone, all right, that's what we want. So now when I repair this, I'm gonna retape up into here. I'm gonna retape this area along in here, all right? What that's gonna require me to do is do several coats of mud in there. I need room to work. I can't just put mud on the <laughs> across the texture. You hear that noise? I can't, I can't just do that, all right? So I've gotta strip off the texture around this area. That's where our little water bottle comes into play. All right, I've got my drop cloth down. I'm gonna take my little water bottle and I'm gonna spray the area around it where I'm gonna strip off that texture, all right? So I'm not gonna come three feet in both directions. I don't need to, all right? This stuff is stained from water damage, but it's not, it's, or it's stained from water discoloration, but it's not, there's no mold, there, it's not loose, it's in good shape. It's just staining, it's, it's really just a stain. So we don't need to strip all that off. But I am gonna come back about probably 10 or 12 inches on either side of this joint to give me room to work my, all my uh, texturing and all my floating in. So all I'm gonna do is take my spray bottle, <clears throat> and I'm gonna spray the area I wanna strip off, all right? All right, I don't want it crazy drippy, I just wanna get it wet, all right? And I'm gonna give that about five minutes and come back and I'll do another coat on it, okay? So we'll check on it in a couple minutes. All right, so we got two applications of water, let's see what happens now. It's starting to come loose now. See how it peels off there? All right, not so much on that side. There's a little more paint over there, but it's starting to come loose. Probably hard to see, but that texture is starting to really come off that thing. Yeah, <clears throat> now it's working. Now you can see smooth drywall coming through. That's what we're going for. We want the, just that texture to come off. We don't want the drywall underneath to come off. We just want the texture to come off. We want it smooth. All right, so I'm scraped off pretty good. Got all, it's pretty smooth, it's not too bad. I'll be able to work with that, I think. Now, it's still a little bit moist around the outsides, but once it dries, it's gonna get pretty solid again. So it won't be a problem. It's not gonna, like if you over scrape or anything, it's not gonna be a big deal. All right, so I do use my hand to knock down some of the rough edges that are still wet if I want to get that smoothed out. But you'll see there's a little area right here, it kind of looks like the state of Alaska, <laughs> that ended up peeling off when I got it wet. Now there's tape underneath there and the tape's in really good shape. So I'm not, I don't need to do anything more now. I will float that out a little bit and then I'll texture on top of that. This is my main area of repair. So this joint and this joint here. So what I need to do is, I need to take my knife, the one I showed you earlier, and I need, I wanna square off the tape ends right here and square off the tape ends right there. It gives me a nice, even space to lay my tape in. You'll see that in a minute. You'll see that wants to come off like that. See, nice and square, and I'll take my tape right up into that. Get rid of all my tape in the middle there. I wanna cut all that stuff out of there. Oh, look at that. Now it's growing on me. It happens. <clears throat> there it goes. So the product is getting bigger. It happens sometimes. We had a bad tape joint and some damage from that water that we couldn't see. And as soon as I put any pressure on that tape up to that point, where that old leak mark was, that's where it ended up peeling back to. All right, so that's, that's the water does that. It loosens that stuff up. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this wet out round out here, and then I'm gonna scrape all that back, and then our repair will now be up to here, down to there. All right, so let's take a look at what happened here. So that was the little area I was working on. I grabbed that tape, put a little snug, snug pull on it and it came up about two more feet. So we're gonna repair, strip off this texture and this texture and maybe about six or eight inches above it to give us room to float. And then, so our repair is gonna be all of this and then about six or 10 inches along here.
welcome to Monday, folks. So this is what happens sometimes. You can see the area is a lot bigger, and that being happened to be a heck of a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be. I was anticipating like here to here. It's about another foot and a half, two feet down this way. That water damage along there was really just um, a little bit worse than I thought. It felt like that that mud was sticking to it still, and it was not. As soon as I put the scraper on it anywhere close to it, it just start peeling off. So I'm going to do it right. It's a little bit more work than I thought, but it's still a very manageable area. You know, I mean, when I quote jobs like this, I usually overquote the size because of this very reason. You never know exactly what you're going to get into. One, when you start spraying this stuff with water, how it's going to react. And two, what the damage actually is, what, what adhesion is left. So you kind of, I kind of got to leave a little uh, grace room or a little bit of a wiggle room, I guess you could call it, for my estimates when I do this, this kind of work. So. so you can see, here's the, the texture. This is the stipple texture we talked about. And then I've stripped it down to smooth finish. And then there's original drywall. So there's an edge here that will float. All that will float. But I want it, when, I, when I put my blade on there and take it across that edge, I want it to be smooth. If it's bumpy up here, it makes it the, the, the finish really ripply and wavy. It's very hard to get them to blend in. A lot easier to get it blend in when you transition to smooth and then into your stipple. It's a lot easier to hide. So, yeah. So that's what it looks like. I don't know. I'd say it's maybe six square feet of total repair. Um, or I'm sorry, maybe 10 square feet of total repair, maybe four by four. Um, maybe maybe three by two, something like that. But yeah, it's it's ready to uh, to start mud. We'll get that in the first thing in the morning. All right, so this is my joint I'm gonna be taping. So there's a piece of drywall that stops here and a piece, another piece of drywall that stops here and there's a butt joint between the two. And we tape it and float it with mud. We put a drywall compound on it to help but, uh, blend those two pieces together naturally. And then we put the coating on top of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mesh. So I just pre-cut this to length. It's a little bit sticky on the back, so I don't need to apply it right now. I shouldn't need to apply much mud or any mud at all to this to get it to stay in place. I squared off the end here. I'm going to take it all the way tight up to that area. Just try to keep it straight down there. It's a little bit long, but I can cut the excess off. All right. So you see there, I just rub that on my fingers. So I'm also going to put a little piece right here. We've got old tape on here, but I just want to put another piece on there to make sure it's nice and strong. And there's no settling or cracks. All right, so we have our mud mixed up. We're just gonna apply a first coat. I make the first coat pretty stinking thin. Uh, I, I like it not to build up on the existing surfaces. I like it just kind of fill that area in. So we're just gonna take it in, uh, or put some, a dab on there, and just put enough on there to put a cover over that tape, all right? We don't need to do all in one process. It's okay to do three or four coats on this thing. It, you're actually sp supposed to do it that way. Now, with these drywall blades, they're interesting. You'd have to look down the edge. You probably can't see it with that thing, but it's curved. So it's got a curve. So there's a crown in that blade one way or another. And we want that crown to be up. So we want the crown to be towards us as we're applying mud. It allows us to add, to put the mud and balance it where we need to, right? So just mix it in there, put a little bit on there and fill it in. So all we're doing is filling in that little void right now. We're not doing anything fancy. We're just making sure we're getting mud on coverage over that joint. All right, it's a little bit wet, so it's going to sag a little bit, but it's again, it dries quickly. It's 20 minute mud, so it's going to dry pretty quickly. I want to try to minimize the amount of extra I have on the sides, the buildup. I don't like that. It just means it translates into more sanding. All right, so all my tape is covered on it now. All right, so I just want to go back and make sure I don't have any high spots or anything. It's really sticking out. I've got kind of a mess in here. This is going to be a big sanding area anyway, but I got kind of a mess here. I want to try and minimize that if I can, just to try to keep it under control so I'm not sanding for a half an hour, 45 minutes, trying to get this thing leveled out. All right, so I just take my time. I'm not going to do much more than that right now. I'm trying to smooth some stuff out just to keep it reasonable from working it later. All right, so that's it. It's not pretty, it's the first coat, but it's gonna, gonna be a good base for what we're trying to do here in the next coat. So this is gonna take probably, they, they call it 20 minute mud, but when it gets a little bit thicker, it probably takes 45 minutes to an hour. So what I'll do is, is I'll let this dry, come back and we'll do another coat. All right, so hang with me. All right, second coat, same size blade. We're gonna go around the edges now and fill in this rough edge. I'll put a little bit more on my coat this morning, but we wanna get the rough edge smoothed out a little bit with the second coat and the third coat will have a bigger blade will come in and the fourth coat will do the widest blade. So again, we want to make sure we have follow the contour of the blade. 
But these first coats, just remember, it's not that big of a deal if it's not perfect. You know, there's going to be some holidays. There's going to be some nicks and dings in it. There's going to be some rolls and ridges. It's not that big of a deal. You'll have an, plenty of opportunity to sand and scrape if you need to to make sure that stuff is taken care of. Just make sure you're taking your time and you're getting stuff applied correctly. That's, that's the big lesson on this part. All right, so we're trying to avoid big, gigantic goop marks on the sides where it transitions from the texture to the old drywall mud to the new drywall mud. We want that transition to be relatively smooth. So I don't care so much about the stuff on the inside of my fill spot yet. I'm more worried about the stuff on the outside. The smoother I have that, the less um, holiday I have on that, the less goop I have built up on the sides, the less sanding I have to do, the smoother the product's gonna look at the end. So this is not a bad second coat. The third coat will get our wider blade in here and we'll get another broader section here. But you can see now why I don't like that texture right up against my repair. I wanna pull that texture back six, eight, 10, 12 inches. It gives me room for my blade to go smooth. If I go like this, you can hear that rattling. If I go like that, very smooth. That's what I want my blade to ride on. That's what you should be doing also is have that blade right on flat drywall, not on texture. All right, third coat time. I'm going to cheat and use the bigger blade. I'm going to upsize to the 12 instead of the 8. But what I want to do is I want to scrape off any big chunks. Not too much on here, but any big chunks just to get them out of the way. Here I'm using the 14 inch blade to get the third coat of mud applied to the area. This broader blade allows for a smooth coat across the whole surface area and it really helps eliminate a lot of the holidays and big gloops that you have that will interfere with your finishing and sanding process. All right, so my edges are pretty much knocked down. I'm full across the whole gap. Everything's filled in now. So this is the third coat. Last coat will be the same blade. I'm going to do a little bit more of a um, it's called a skim coat, a really thin mix. We'll put a little bit of dish soap in it to make it super smooth. But yeah, so we got one more coat. We'll do uh, our big sand and then we'll get our texture on there. This is just a little pre-sanding I like to do between coats. I'm knocking down any ridges or edges that might be existing there and just helping me uh, get ready for the next coat. All right, so I sanded down my third coat just real lightly, got all the big like little bumps. There wasn't much on there. So this is our skim coat. This, this coat of mud is actually super thin. Um, you can see it just drips off there really easily. I put, one, with one little pan of this, I put one little drop of Dawn dishwashing liquid in it. It helps soften it and smooth it out. It turns it in almost like a really high level ice cream, uh, soft serve ice cream. Very smooth and it makes it easier to sand and it just spreads off your blade easier with that little bit of that, of that soap in there. So it really, you don't have to do that. Um, but we make it really wet and we put a little bit of that uh, of that soap in there just to help keep it smooth, all right? So I'm just gonna skim over this, fill in any holidays I have left with a really thin coat of mud. Um, I'm not trying to build anything up. I'm just trying to skim over all the edges, make sure everything is filled in, all the little bubbles and air bubbles and pock marks and things like that are filled in nice and smooth. And then I'll be able to do a final sanding on it. Don't skip this step. You could probably get away with doing three coats and then just applying your texture over that. But I've come to find over the years that if you do that fourth coat, it really looks professional. It looks like you knew what you were doing. It looks like you cared about what you're doing and things blend in together and it's much harder to see. It's one of those things that just makes a little difference, doesn't cost hardly any money and it, and it really, the product really shows in the end. All right, so here's what it looks like. Skim coat's on, it's just getting dry now. It's been about 15 minutes. We're getting ready to do our texture coat. We're about two hours into this process with dry time. Uh, that last coat dries in about 10 minutes. It's super thin and that soap really helps dry things out uh, and nice and smooth. You can see the texture where the texture is gonna come into it. I'll blend the texture over into this a little bit on, on the other sides, but this whole area is nice and smooth and even. No big holidays, no big bumps. It's ready to be sanded. So let's get it sanded down and get a texture on there. Okay, so now we sand. We're trying to get all this just smoothed out, no ridges. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we're gonna put texture over it, but we want it all smoothed out, no ridges, no bumps, no lumps or anything like that. So sanding is just one of those things that it's just messy all the time. These are pretty fine particles. They get in the air, they get all over the furniture, they get all over the floor. Just do your best to cover everything up. You see I've got the door open there just to kind of help with airflow and it was pretty cold, but I'd rather have the, the dust go out of the house and have to vacuum the entire house down. We routinely have 
projects where the dust is everywhere and there's nothing we can do but do what you can and, and use your use a good vacuum to clean everything up when you're done. all right so we're sanded now it's nice and smooth i mean it's really smooth you see me using my hand i'm feeling for holidays and bumps and stuff it's super smooth now you know you did it right if when you get to this point you only sand for five or six minutes if that at all so um yeah it's nice and smooth this is definitely ready for our texturing um, so let's go ahead and get set up, mix up our texture mud, and then uh, get our little texture brush out, and we'll show you guys how to do that. All right, so final step. I've got a stipple brush. You buy these at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're like five bucks. Um, they're kind of stiff. So usually when you go like this on it, it makes a weird texture. It doesn't match. This is really thin texturing and a really thick brush. They're usually mashed down after you do it over a whole house. So what I like to do is go to an angle and get the brush, the side of the brush. It just gives a little more texture, a uh, little, little more realistic blending. So I'm gonna blend in over a few inches all the way around this thing. I may have to make two batches of this thing. It is not possible to get an exact match on this stuff, but you can do some things to kind of cheat your way through it. Um, it, it's not easy to match this. It's very difficult. Um, you would actually almost have to have the exact same brush, the exact same mud manufacturer, the exact same consistency, moisture content, and all that to get this exactly right. Um, the goal is to get it close enough to where when you walk through the room, you're not like, oh, that was the ceiling repair. I'm not going to have enough mud. I'll have to make another little batch of this stuff in this bucket. Um, important tip here. If you run out of mud, it's okay. You can always mix more. With 20 minute mud like this, if you mix more and go back and start again somewhere, you cannot overlap your, your new stuff. It will pull it right off. It'll, it actually acts like an adhesive and it'll pull it right off the ceiling. So you have to let it dry all the way for a good hour and then come back in and do the rest of your texture. All right, let's get one last look at it. It's all done now. You can see there's a color shade difference but the texture blended in pretty well. I got one little area up here. It's a little bit thicker than what I would have liked, but I think once I get everything painted up, it's gonna blend in just fine. That little area right there, just a little bit thicker. Um, so yeah, I think it turned out okay. All right, so that's it for this one. A little bit of a simple ceiling repair. It's not crazy difficult. It's pretty simple. Uh, just takes a little bit of time and practice. Uh, if it looks bad, you can always do it again. Uh, you can say, I would probably charge without paint, probably 350, 400 bucks for about four hours of that work. Um, it, it, depending on how big it is and how complicated it is, that ended up being a little bit bigger than what it looked like it was gonna be, which is honest to God normal for the way I, we do stuff around here. It looks one way and ends up being another. So that's just part of the deal. So appreciate you guys logging in. If you like what you saw, just hit the subscribe button or hit the like button. Um, we'll have more content a little more consistently coming out this year. It's been spotty uh, the last, we get busy in the summertime. That's all I can tell you is we get busy. So um, yeah, so appreciate you tuning in to Lake and Logs TV. See you guys on the next one.